What's up, Fragrant World? Welcome back to another Stay Fresh production, and it is that time of the year. Now, if you've been following me any length of time, then you know that the transition seasons are my favorite seasons of the year. That is spring and autumn. Autumn being my favorite, but spring is a close second uh, because we're in this intermediary period where it's not too warm or too cold, but you have some days where it is warmer or cooler, so you can wear a wider array of fragrances. You can still kind of dip into some of the winter fragrances, some of the more oriental and deep and woody and spicy scents, but you can also start breaking out some of the more fresh, herbaceous, green, you know, more effervescent citrus-based fragrances as we're getting into the summertime. So we're gonna dive right into this. To start things off, we have three honorable mentions. Two of them are fragrances that you're gonna see on everyone's list probably, and or they're fragrances that have been on everyone's spring list for years. And one of them is a little bit less so, but still pretty well known for the transition seasons. First honorable mention here is Timbuktu from L'Artisan Parfumaire. This is a really, really nice mango incense uh, balsamic kind of fragrance. It's a very unique scent, very interesting mix of accords, ones that on paper you probably wouldn't think would work, but they do because they were very masterfully blended by Bertrand Duchefort. And this is an honorable mention mainly because it's one I really have to be in the mood for. It is very different, even though it is super wearable and even likable to a lot of people. I have to be in the mood for it, so therefore I don't reach for it all the time, but I will reach for it here and there when I'm feeling it. The next honorable mention, probably the most popular fragrance from the House of Amouage, it's Reflection Man. And again, you're gonna see this everywhere. Just an honorable mention this year, one of my absolute favorite fragrances in general, top 10 for sure. Super elegant, fresh, kind of powdery, kind of indolic with that jasmine, but it's creamy and smooth and a little sweet. It's really just, again, elegance in a bottle, something you can wear easily for more upscale occasions, especially in the daytime. Man, super refined stuff. Again, we'll be reaching for it here and there, but trying to be a little less boring this year, so that's why it's an honorable mention. And continuing in the pursuit to be less boring this year. Last honorable mention is one you will definitely see a lot of, Creed Green Irish Tweed. They call it the King of Spring. A really, really nice fragrance, especially for this greener time of the year. It is pretty quintessential, I must admit. It's fresh, it's kind of ozonic, it's very green and herbaceous, but has a smooth, musky quality to it with that ambergris, the sandalwood, violet leaf is in here, I believe. Uh, iris, lemon verbena. I love how this thing like squeaks. I love how this thing, I love how this thing. I'm gonna start busting it out here and there this spring. So let's dive into the list proper. Here at number 10, this could have been number one. This is one of my favorite fragrances of all time and I wear it all the time. I've been trying to actually reach for it less, but I know I will be wearing this a lot because it's pretty much versatile all year round kind of scent. From the House Apart From The Marley, it's Layton. Almost made this an honorable mention, but I had to be real and say, you know what, I'm gonna wear this a lot. So it would be stupid and it would be uh, false of me to leave it off of the actual list. I just wore this the other day and man, it's so enjoyable. It's sweet but it's very fresh and spicy and aromatic, very mass appealing. You know, all these accords come together to make a sweet and very playful, but also kind of sexy uh, fragrance. And I love it. So I'm gonna wear it a lot, but only at number 10 because I'm trying to give some others some more shine. Number nine here, uh, and from this point on, I'm trying to rank these fragrances in the order that I think I'm gonna wear them the most. We never know what'll actually happen. We've been here before. I've done follow-up videos to my seasonal list where I'd say what I actually wore. But this is just 
what I think is going to happen. But, you know, again, we'll see from the house of Javoy Paris, incident diplomatique. Man, this is super elegant stuff. Very unique. Oh, my goodness. It is a uh, it's an interesting mix. You have a lot of patchouli, lots of vetiver. You have this almost boozy quality, which I think is maybe a mix of mandarin orange with nutmeg. But I don't really know. Honestly, I can't tell you where it comes from. And it's there at the beginning. This is a very elegant scent. It almost has a bit of a smokiness to it somewhere off in the background. Not for everyone, but if you wear this on the right occasions, I would mainly actually wear this at night. But if I am going to wear it in the day, I have to be in a suit. You wear this around the right occasions, then you're going to smell so authoritative, man. This stuff is super confident. You got to be confident wearing it, but definitely one to sample if you're interested. That is Incident Diplomatique. Here at number seven, this is a brand new fragrance to my collection. I bought this myself. I was really interested in it for a while and decided to pick it up basically blind, which I don't recommend you do, but I'm happy with this one. This is from the house of Mancera, only my second fragrance from the house. And this is called Kumkat Wood. And main players, oh man, main players in this grapefruit, cedar wood, vetiver. I think there's some spices in here. And basically what this smells like, Terre d'Hermes or something in that family. It smells like another fragrance on this list too, but it's in that family of very earthy, borderline dirty but fresh and kind of citric and sharp fragrances not a lot of sweetness but this one has a little bit more sweetness to it, it has a playfulness to it so imagine tater Hermes, but less sharp a little sweeter definitely smoother and as it dries it just gets a little bit more playful there's a warmth to it from amber that gets musky so it's like a more youthful version, if you will, of Terre d'Hermes. Beautifully unisex, perfect for the spring. And as with Mancera fragrances, I get really good performance out of this one. Relatively light compared to some of the others, but it still lasts all day. This is good stuff. I highly recommend you sample this if you can. That's Kumkat Wood. That was number eight. I probably said seven, but now we're on number seven. This is from a pretty new and upcoming um, indie artisanal house based out of Vancouver, British Columbia, up in Canada. And Matthew Melig. Matthew has been such a valuable and insightful source of knowledge uh, in my life as of recently. He reached out to me and he said, hey, I want to send you some of my fragrances. And he sent me all these videos of him explaining how they were constructed, all of his processes and concepts that went into them. Matthew uses some of the highest quality ingredients in his fragrances, and he's also non-IFRA compliant, which means that he doesn't comply with a lot of the regulations imposed by IFRA, who is a international governing body, if you didn't know, for fragrances. So therefore, his fragrances cannot really be sold in stores and major stores around the world, but you can still buy them from him directly. And this particular one, this is good stuff. This is a cardamom based scent. It's called number 59. It's tobacco, cardamom and frankincense. And good Lord. So high quality stuff. He uses real tobacco absolute in this stuff and man it makes for a rich fragrance but it is not overstated it's very potent in a way it has a density to it but it is not just scream off your skin getting people's face kind of scent this is such an elegant scent you get a very cooling and spicy and very present cardamom at the first spray but immediately it starts to dry into kind of a smooth and rich tobacco. There is a sweetness in there. I think the frankincense plays a role in that, but the cardamom does too. There's also a beautiful plum note paired with that tobacco. Gosh, it is so gorgeous. As it dries, it gets a little bit leathery. It's a little resinous from the frankincense, but it's still sweet and warm. 
This is really, really good stuff. I will link Matthew's work down in the description. It's so nice. Not the most spring-like scent, if you will, in terms of a scent profile, but something that I could easily pull off at night when I want to be a little bit more elegant. I'm not sure if Matthew sells samples. I'll find out. I'll put it here on the screen if he does, but either way, link will be down in the description if you want to check out his perfumes. Really, really beautiful. All right, here at number six, one that's gotten a little bit of buzz as of lately. Came out, I think, just last year. This is from the house of Al Haramain. I'm butchering that name, but I'm sure you've heard of the house. And this is from their portfolio collection. First of all, I just want to show you the box, the presentation for the packaging that this comes in. This is pretty incredible stuff. Originally, it comes in this box, really, you know, kind of basic paper box, but nice. And then inside that box is this box. It's a faux leather with like hard plastic, but it really, really nice quality. It opens up like this. The bottle would sit in this pouch inside of this little uh, coffin style thing. And the pouch is, is really nice, it has drawstrings on it, has the uh, insignia on the tag there. So what came inside this box? Again from the portfolio collection, this is called Royal Stallion. Okay. And if you haven't heard, this is a clone of Parfum de Marley Pegasus, which is one of Parfum de Marley's most popular releases next to Layton. And I was never crazy about Pegasus, but it had been many years since I smelled it. But that scent profile is very unique, way on the more metallic side of things. It's a very cold fragrance. Almond-based heliotrope, sandalwood, maybe some vanilla, and again, um, this metallic quality to it. And they nailed it to a T in every way. Like the scent is spot on, good quality. I smelled it up close. I'm like, okay, it smells very smooth. I wore it multiple times. And the performance on this thing is beastly. This thing lasted all day. By the 15th hour, I was still literally getting wafts around me. Like it was nothing. I wasn't having to do my weave and bob bob and weave, which I haven't done in a long time. I still do that, by the way, from time to time. If you've been following the channel, you know what I'm talking about. But this stuff is strong. It makes itself known. It's very pleasant. Beautifully unisex as well. Even the bottle, this presentation is really surprising and beautiful. I mean, I didn't expect this from the house, but they put a lot of love into this bottle. Heavy metal cap, great atomizer, it's, you know, just beautiful color scheme here. I love that it's kind of gold, but it, you can see through it. Beautiful plaque, super thick bottle. So I'm going to link them down in the description if you want to check it out. Awesome. Here at number five from the house of Roger Parfums, we have Vetiver. This is the Parfum Cologne version. And Roger took his already popular and formidable scent vetiver pour on and he parfum cologne it if you will or he has a whole collection of these if you didn't know he made them more fresh a little bit more transparent but still having the qualities of a eau de parfum so where they last on the skin a long time they project off the skin right at first kind of like an eau de cologne that's going to be really present but it does again have a transparency that is really nice Roger loves his bergamot and lemon combo. That's what you get at the top of this. There's a floral heart, maybe even some labdanum, some jasmine, and then a lot of woods in the base, woods and spices. I think there's cumin in there. There's definitely vetiver, of course, cedar wood, cedar needles, things like that. It's a little smoky, very woody, but it's so fresh. It's a cooling freshness, but it's smoky and woody in the background. This is elegant stuff. If you like Tom Ford Gray Vetiver, but you're looking for something a little bit on the step up, this is the one to check out. I would get a sample if you can. That is Vetiver. I actually have reviewed this one, I forgot. <laughs> I'll link that up there 
if you want to check it out. Here at number four, brand new to my collection as well, from a house that I regretfully have not talked about in a while. And I've really been a big fan of this house since they started up a few years ago. My friend Christian over at Argos Fragrances. They have a brand new line. This is so exciting. I was really looking forward to this line when he told me it was going to be coming out. We talked maybe almost a year ago and he told me about this line. He sent me some pictures of what the bottles would look like and I was instantly hooked and I was so just taken aback when he graciously sent me a couple of the fragrances, two of the three new fragrances. This one is probably my favorite of the three. This is called Bacio Immortal. Oh man, just look at that. Take it in. Look at that plaque. Each one has its own unique artwork on the plaque, on that design. Beautiful thick glass, customized bottle. Wonderful heavy metal cap. And man, this stuff, let me show you the box too. And it would come in this beautifully designed box. Each one has its own unique artwork on it. And I believe this is supposed to depict Psyche being kissed by, I think that might be Cupid or Eros, one of the two, and thus allowing her to transcend into the Greek pantheon of gods and goddesses. Now, within this paper box, really stepped up the presentation, kind of like a book, but it opens up this way. Inside, the fragrance would sit very tightly and securely fastened, and you have a whole backstory on the fragrance with the notes. This is a leather-based scent, and uh, it has leather, has raspberry, which you might think, okay, Tom Ford Tuscan leather. That's what I thought when I first sampled it. But now, in giving it a full wearing from the bottle, oh, this is good stuff. This has so much depth to it. There's some oud, there's vanilla in there, there's bright citruses up top, there's some pink pepper. You have some florals in there like jasmine and violet. Ultimately, it comes off very leathery, but sweet, a little spicy, has an aromatic nature to it. And it is kind of dark down there and it is so smooth so smooth and borderline beast mode this stuff will last forever on me i wore it the other day i loved every minute this is super elegant stuff if you want to have a head turner bacho immortal this is your bet awesome leather fragrance i'm going to link them down below i got a 10 percent off code which is fresh 10. if you want to sample their fragrances they have a wonderful sample pack. You can get 10% off that. Or if you really want to take the plunge and get a bottle, again, you can use the discount towards your entire order. And I'm going to be doing a giveaway on Argos, but not yet. You'll need to stay tuned to that. I'm not sure if I'm going to do it here or on Instagram. So just stay tuned. Follow me on Instagram if you haven't already. Stay tuned for that giveaway. You have a chance to get their fragrances and sample them. But I love Baccio Immortal. This is good stuff. I actually prefer this to Tuscan leather, if you're asking me. But that's just me. Okay, we're on a record to make this the longest video I've ever shot for a list, but hopefully I cut it down. This is from the house of Danielle Hossier. Love this stuff. This is called Vetiver. Vetiver is a fantastic note for the spring, if you didn't already know. I love the side, the sticker there. Very unique bottle design, kind of oblong in a way. Beautiful cap. Man, this is awesome stuff. This is also kind of in the realm of Teodoro Hermes, similar to the Mancera Kunkat Wood. A little bit more closer to Teodoro Hermes in terms of the vetiver presence. It's more earthy than the Kunkat Wood, but it has a sweetness to it not quite as much as the Mancera, but a little bit you know how about this i would put this in between terre de hermes and the Mancera. in terms of scent profile when we're talking about earthiness and sweetness it's kind of like right in the middle it does have an orange leaf note rather than straight up citrus but i think there are some other citruses in here man this is really beautiful and it is quite versatile i could wear dressed up i could wear casually it's really, really nice. This is one I purchased last summer. I loved it when I first smelled it. I had to get it. 
So that is Vetter from Daniel Hosier here at number two. One of my good friends, and it's not the only reason that he's a friend that this fragrance is on this list, but you must know that this man is one of the most generous and giving and just kind-hearted people I've ever met, period. And that's how you win at life. Just be a good person. But on top of that, he has a fantastic company and from that company comes this. I'm talking about George Zaharoff, and this is called Zaharoff Signature Pour Ohm. I know you've seen this around. I talked about this on my channel multiple times. This is kind of what it says in the name, a beautiful signature scent. I've talked about it to death, so I'm not gonna spend a lot of time, but it is in the realm of the barbershop style aromatic fougere. It's creamy. It's spicy, it's sweet, it's fresh. It kind of smells like shaving foam, but not really. There's so much more depth to this. You have patchouli in there, there's some oud in there, there's pear, maybe even some sandalwood, cedarwood. Lavender is a big player here. Gosh, it's so nice. Something, again, you can wear this anytime, anywhere. I think it shines in the transition season, so I'm gonna be wearing this a lot. Hence why it's number two. That is Zaharoff Signature Poron. Okay, and number one and two, it could have gone either way. But this fragrance, which I only have a travel atomizer of, this fragrance stole my heart when I first smelled it. It has a wonderful track record with everyone I've shown this to. I recently featured this in a video with my family. This was their favorite fragrance of the maybe eight or nine that I showed them without a doubt and it's clear on camera you can see if you missed that video please check it out here and it comes with two other parts make sure you watch them first but oh man this is so gorgeous for the spring we're talking about oligarch eau de parfum man this is a juniper based fragrance but there's also tons of citruses lots of florals lots of woods maybe some spices in here. I get a lot of bergamot in here. I got lots of cedar wood and juniper berry. Like I said, some lemon, maybe some vetiver in here. It is, it's complex, but it's also kind of simple. But if you really dig into it, you're gonna find a lot of nuance to this fragrance. This is, it's refreshing. I put it on, it, you know what? This is my scent of the night. We're just gonna do it. This is what I'm wearing. Man, this is pleasant. Really, really pleasant. Uplifting. <sighs> That's all I'm gonna say. I've talked for a long time. These have been my top 10 favorite fragrances for the upcoming spring, ones that I will be reaching for. Again, links will be down in the description to as many of these as I can compile. You can check them out for yourself. Hopefully you can get some samples and maybe have some new pickups to look forward to for the spring on the niche side of things. Now I have a designer video coming very soon, so stay tuned for that, that'll be coming. But in the meantime, if you like the video, you know what to do, like the video. Thank you so much for tuning in. Peace, I'll see you in the next one.